Okay, we're gonna take a look at this style of engine here. This is an NGD uh, diesel engine. NGD stands for uh, New Generation Diesel. And the idea with this one, it's another international engine, very similar to the other ones I've done in previous training videos. There are some NGD videos also, as well as the regular um, DT and DTA engines, which is a diesel turbo engine and a diesel turbo after cool. Most engines we see today are after cooled, and what we're doing there is taking the charge air, running it through a heat exchanger, and reducing the temperature so we have cool, cold air coming into the engine, which makes it better for complete combustion. So we talk about complete combustion, one of the things that we have to really focus on is making sure that we have sufficient cylinder pressure. We don't want to have too much cylinder pressure because that can be hazardous to the health of the internal components of the engine, but we want to have the right amount that the manufacturer talks about. So in prior video training segments, we have done compression testing, which tells us and establishes the actual pressure through a test, a dynamic test, whether the engine has the capacity to produce the pressure to promote complete combustion. So the other test that's done, if a compression test is not valid to do on that particular style of engine, or we have no way of accessing that engine, another method of checking the blow-by or the ability for the engine to seal internally is to use what is called a water manometer. So I have two different water manometers that I'm going to talk to you about. The first tool is the water manometer, which I'm going to show you in a moment and how to make that connection. The other one is a digital manometer. And what we want to do and what I'm trying to explain to you and show you is the usage of two different types of tools to attain the same measurement. One is the digital accuracy and one is the actual practical application of using the tool and reading the pressure on a mechanical apparatus that gives us the reading. So one of the first things we have to do, and I've gone ahead on this particular engine, and I'm going to install a brand new O-ring onto what's called the road tube or the draft tube. So I'm just going to install this on here so that it doesn't skew my measurements. Now this engine here being a new generation diesel, it has a unitized valve cover and air intake system all in one. So the charge air comes into the intake manifold as part of the valve cover and then it's spread to the intake ports which is on the top of the cylinder head. Not like other engines that are that is a through port where the air comes in one side of the engine on the intake and then leaves on the other side through the exhaust. So this one here, we call this one also a parallel port because it comes in one side, swirls through the chamber and comes right back out parallel to the inlet port. So this is a parallel port induction system on this particular engine. So I'm going to just install this road tube and what this does is allows me to have a connection to join the um, tool to the engine and read the pressure that's actually leaking out past the rings. And if it's leaking out down here, it's going to fill the crankcase and it's going to come out the blow-by tube and go down and dispel the uh, pressure that's inside the engine. So again, making sure that gasket is in place and pushing it in so that when I do hook up my tool, I do have a good accurate reading. So this is one particular method of checking the capacity of how well we can actually seal the rings in the cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce this tool to you and it is our crankcase breather orifice adapter. Okay, so now that I've got the road tube or uh, blow-by tube in place down here at the bottom, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to connect our restricted orifice adapter to this particular pipe. Now, the restricted orifice, you can buy these for lots of different style of engines, lots of different displacements of engines. So this one here in particular was out of the manual for the DT466 uh, new generation diesel. They do come with an orifice size that supports the displacement of the engine. So this one here supports anywhere from a three and a half to four and a half inch piston. The pistons in this engine are just over four inches. So we install this adapter onto the bottom of the road tube 
and then just tighten it up so that we have good accurate reading and we can get the pressure attained. So what this tool does is it permits a certain amount of blow-by to be used in the engine and then it gives an accurate reading of how much pressure leaves this tool and then reflects on what's called our slack tube or our water manometer and I'll show you that tool here in just a moment. The rest of the air pressure leaves through a restricted size orifice in the bottom so that it can choke up some of the pressure leaving and cause the scale or the gauge to read so that we have accuracy on the tool. Okay, I have our digital manometer connected now to our uh, adapter that goes on to the blow-by tube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run the engine for a moment and I'm going to take a look at the readings. Now, this is a brand new engine. It has very minimal running time on it. I'm going to assume at this particular point that the rings are broken in on this engine because, like I said, it has been run for quite some time. So I'm probably going to be looking for a very low reading or very almost zero reading. And the best thing would be is if we could promote complete combustion by sealing the cylinders completely, but there's always going to be a certain amount of leakage in those cylinders. So we'll start this and we'll take a look at it and we'll see where we're at for the reading and then we'll do a comparison to the mechanical. Okay, I've gone ahead and I've checked the reading on this thing and it's just under one inch of water. So it's, it's actually reading 0.008. Okay, so we are very, very low on the reading and what I'm going to do now is do a comparison to the slack tube. The reading is going to be low again, like I said, because the engine is fairly new. Uh, on an older engine, we'd be looking to see at the very maximum anywhere between one to two inches of water in the bottom end. If we have any more than that, it's indicating we have way too much pressure leaking around the rings, and that's a good indication for the servicing technician that the engine does need to come apart and further tests and inspections. And I'm going to show you some of the results that happened that we did a crankcase blow-by test on, and we found really high blow-by. It was somewhere up in the range of around nine inches of water which is an extremely large amount and I'll talk to you about that value momentarily. Okay I've set up the water manometer on the back of this engine because it has a magnetic base on the bottom and it has magnetic base on the top. Usually we can hang it onto the truck door or onto the truck itself or somewhere under the hood. We need to have this thing sitting level and when you open the valve at the top what happens is the fluid balances. So I'm just going to show you that once we see pressure, what happens here. So when we have pressure coming from the cylinder or blow by, what ends up happening is it's going to read the value for us. And the tape measure is on here for a reference point. So I can come up onto this little index here and I can move the tape measure. And all I'm going to do is pick a reference point right in the middle between the two lines and I'm going to use number nine as a reference point. So when I start the engine and I run the engine, when I have blow by and it reacts through that adapter and then onto the water manometer, it's going to cycle this scale just like I'm mimicking here with air pressure. Okay, so what I'm going to look for is from this number nine line is how far it goes up and that's going to give me my reading on how much crankcase blow by I have. Now remember, I was somewhere around, oh, way under one inch of water. It was more like eight tenths. Um, and so in this particular one, I'm going to look to see if I have a very low reading like I already got with the digital manometer, and I'll do a comparison at that point. And again, for you guys, a comparison between the water manometer, which is the practical test, and then the digital test, which is using the digital manometer. Okay, so now that I have my index reference point here on number nine, I'm going to start the engine. I'm going to do a couple wide open throttle applications. I'm going to look to see if I have any difference in pressure. So we'll just start the engine and run it for a moment. OK, 
Okay, like I thought on this, I'm getting a very slight bit of movement, very similar to the digital one, and probably because the engine is fairly new, there is a bit of oil coming out the exhaust, and it's probably just from a little bit of blow-by in the cylinders causing a bit of oil burning. But the engine does have a lot of compression pressure. It is a fresh rebuild. It has new pistons and rings, um, and the valves were done on the cylinder head. So this was a very problematic engine, and we did do a crankcase blow-by test on it, and it did fail at that point, and that's what deemed it necessary to do the repair. So to continue with explanation compared to the test that we were just doing looking for crankcase blow-by, this one lab engine we started up yesterday, and I found that the, uh, the road tube was really spewing out raw oil, which indicated to me that we had a massive uh, blow-by problem in the engine. Didn't know if there was maybe broken rings or a fractured piston or maybe even a hole in the piston, which would indicate why we would have oil slobbering out of that road tube hole. Uh, plus, the engine didn't run very well. It ran quiet. It wasn't banging or hammering, but it did have uh, problems idling and enough power to actually run it. We ran this engine at about three-quarter throttle, and we were very lucky to maybe attain about 1,000 RPMs out of it. So at that point, we pulled the cylinder head off to have a look, and upon just pulling the cylinder head, we found that every single piston in the engine is cracked. The one that actually created the problem for blow-by was number five cylinders, and I'm going to do further segments on this particular engine about doing the repair work in it and reinstalling new components as required because of the defects I found in this engine. So carrying on now with the uh, inspection on this engine, we found that all six pistons had cracks. Number five piston we pulled out and right away found that there was a problem with number five piston that the scuff or the skirt was completely scuffed all the way around, which indicates to me lack of lubrication. So upon further inspection, you can see right in the top of the piston here that there is a hole right in the combustion chamber area. So this combustion chamber is what makes up the clearance volume in the engine as well as the reliefs for the valves. So here I'm not quite sure what caused this extremely high cylinder pressure or I wouldn't say it's gone lean but probably high cylinder pressure, maybe prolonged idling and causing some scuffing on the cylinder walls, but you can see here that the second ring is still intact and still moves. Same with the primary ring. The problem is, is the oil control ring, the groove is completely crushed, and the ring is completely burnt through right around the pin boss area on this side. You can see that secondary ring still moves. It's packed with carbon, of course. It was doing part of its job, but not a complete job. The oil in the bottom end of this uh, engine also was fuel washed. So when you do pull the dipstick and you find that the engine oil is fuel washed, it's a good indication to look for incomplete combustion because if the fuel is making it by the rings and down into the bottom end and washing the fuel, then it's an indication that we have uh, uh, an incapacity of the rings to seal to the cylinder walls. So that's when we would do a compression test cylinder leak test and follow up with crankcase blow-by test to determine the service condition of the engine.